not as it is, but as we are. Find out what I'm talking about on today's live, Transform Your World, or actually Transform Your Life in 15, your world too, right? Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. Good morning, my name is Pia McAdams. I'm an author and I'm also an accounting professor and a certified life coach. I specialize in personal and small business finance and also fitness. I help people reach their goals. And I wanna welcome you to this live broadcast. This is where we're doing five minute exercises, one each for the mind, the body, and the soul. All right, so for this section, we're, or for the mind section, we're actually reading The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey. Now that book actually embodies the fundamental principles of human effectiveness. You know, the habits are their primary, their basics. But before we can actually understand those habits, we first have to understand our paradigms and how to make a paradigm shift. All right, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to be talking about the power of paradigms. We're gonna talk about what and who influences us. And then we're gonna also talk about the importance of making the paradigm shift and how this is going to help us. All right, so you guys are ready? All right. Thank you so much for joining me in this live broadcast and also for those of you that are taking the time to, to watch this recording. Now, this is actually a part two. Yesterday, we talked about paradigms or introdu introduced you to paradigms and I gave you the definition and also with the paradigm shift. So this is part two. Um, again, now we're gonna be talking about the power of paradigms. All right, so remember we talked about paradigms and I want you to kind of see them as maps. Okay, and it's basically just like um, an explanation, uh, a theory, um, a model of something else, All right? So to give you an example, I want you to pretend that you are trying to um, find a specific location in Chicago, okay? So you want your destination, your goal is to find a specific location in Chicago. Well, obviously, if you were given a map, the map is gonna help you reach that destination, right? But let's suppose that you were given the wrong map. So let's say that the map actually says Chicago, but due to some type of printing error, what's actually listed was an, a, a direction or an area of Detroit, okay? So can you imagine how frustrating and ineffective that would be? Like you're thinking you're going to Chicago, so what do you do? You change your behavior, you may try harder, you're very diligent, and you may even go faster, right? Try to double in your, your speed and going faster to reach your destination. But what happens? You're just going to get to the wrong location faster, right? So then maybe you try something else. Like maybe you try, you know, adjusting your attitude. Like you become very, very positive. So what will that do for you? Well, perhaps you'll be more positive because, you know, that's what you're doing. You're adjusting your, your attitude. But what's that going to do for you as far as your destination? Maybe you don't care because you have such a positive attitude. But the bottom line is you will still be lost, okay? So understand that it has nothing to do with your behavior or your, your attitude, but it also has to do with making, it actually has to do, the fundamental fact is that you have to have the accuracy of the map, okay? So you have to have the correct paradigm. So that's number one, okay? So remember that it has to be, the number one fundamental aspect is that you have to have the accuracy of the map. And remember, we're talking about maps as paradigms. All right, so keep in mind, guys, that we have all these maps in our heads, right? We have maps of how things should be um, based upon our, our, our reality, and then also how, actually how they are based upon our reality, and then how they should be based upon our values. And for that, I wanna kinda of give you a story. Now this um, one has to do with my sister, my baby sister, Sherry. Hi, Sherry, if you're watching. I know you're watching, so hi, Sherry. So um, now Sherry, actually, this is, this is a long time ago. Now Sherry speaks um, Japanese fluently. And my dad was once stationed in Japan, and so she had opportunity to go over there and live for three years. And, and while she was there, she ended up teaching the children English. And then one of the parents invited her um, into their home. Now, let me just kind of back up for just a moment because I, you know, make this assumption that you know what I'm talking about. If I'm talking about my, my parents were stationed in um, Japan, my dad was a Navy chaplain. He was in the U.S. Um, Navy. So therefore, he was stationed over Japan, which means they lived on base. You know, they have different bases on, on Japan. So when um, she was actually teaching the kids, though, outside of the base, so like in the actual area, not on the you know, United States property in Japan or territory, I should say, in Japan. So she was invited to go, you know, into the community and to a, a particular parent's, our parents' house. And so she was, you know, relaying to us her experience there. I think she spent like the weekend there. But it's that one time that this is the first night that she was there. 
you know, she was getting ready to take a bath. And for one thing, that was kind of like a, a different treat, like going to a different country because, you know, the Japanese people are generally smaller people. So she was saying like the tubs are really, really small. She had to have, like bend her knees up and everything like that. But once she was done taking a bath, she was looking at how to try to let out the water so that, you know, she can clean up the tub and blah, blah, blah. Well, she couldn't find it. She couldn't figure out how to, you know, let the water out. And so after, you know, not being successful over an extended period of time, she finally just got out. And then she just kind of told the lady, she said, you know, I'm sorry I wasn't able to, to let the water out, you know, because, you know, I couldn't figure out how to do it. And the lady said, no, 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 no. We use the same water. So in other words, in their culture, they use the same bath water to take a bath. Like the whole family uses the same water. Okay. Now imagine, you know, like when she's telling this story, imagine like what she was thinking. And of course, what you're all probably thinking, if, you know, particularly if that's not your culture, which I'm pretty sure for most of us, it isn't, you know, it's like, that's gross. Like, oh my gosh. Like, oh, I'm glad I was the first one. Right. But that's the paradigm, right? That's the way we see things because of the culture. That's because we were raised differently. Right. And I use that example from a different country, but imagine, <clears throat> sorry, even in this country, there's different cultures in this country and it's based upon, you know, differences, not just cultures, but different people, different raising and everything like that, which brings us to how we interpret things, right? We interpret things based upon how we were raised and how we experienced them. And we assume that they should be as we think that they are or should be, but is that right? So this brings us to the next point of, who and who or what or who and what influences us? Well, as you can imagine, the biggest influence comes from our families. Like, you know, again, it's how we are raised. I have a friend that told me that when she was raised um, throughout her whole life, and you know, including her adult life when she was there, um, they were raised to always eat at the table and they always had placemats. So the very first time that she actually went to someone's house and they were like eating like in the living room and there was no placemats, that kind of baffled her, kind of stunned her because, you know, she, she was raised eating at a table. And so the family is our biggest influence. And then, of course, we're also influenced by the school because of what they're teaching us. And then also one of the biggest influence is the church. Now, I'm a PK. PK is a preacher's kid. My dad was a pastor and I mentioned that he was also a chaplain in the U.S. Navy. So my, my values are all influenced based upon the religion. I grew up Baptist. Okay, so that's where I get all my morals and values is based upon that. And again, that's a big influence. And then, of course, you have your friends, you have your associates, you have the environment. And these are some of the factors that influence us, right? And I'm not saying good or bad, right or wrong. It's not about that. We tend to make those judgments based upon how we were raised or what influenced us. But again, I want to show you something else. Now, see this right here. Let me see if you can actually see it. All right, let's see, make sure you can see it. Okay, so what do you see? And I know you guys are probably like answering to me in La La Land because I don't I, remember when I'm doing a broadcast, I don't actually see the comments like every once in a while they'll come up, but uh, but most time I don't. So let me just go ahead and go on to tell you what you probably should be seeing. Some of you are actually seeing the picture of a young lady and some of you are actually seeing the picture of an older lady. So what this is, this is an optical illusion, but the basis is I want you to understand that two people can see the same thing, disagree and both be right. Now, obviously, this is not logical, right? But the psychological, look, actually, yeah, the psychological. Let me go ahead and put it up so you can see it again. Now, sometimes it's hard to admit, but there is another point of view that in fact exists. And sometimes you have to be willing to see things from another frame of reference. Now, even if you see a different point of view, and for most of us, within a short period of time, we're going to revert back to our same point of reference. And this is because of conditioning. Now, in case you don't see it, let me just kind of show it to you really quickly. This is the hair. I'm going to show you the young lady first. This is the hair. And then this is her little nose and this is her eyelashes. She's kind of looking off to the, uh, to the back side like this. Okay. And then this is like a bigger part of her hat. Like this is her hair. This is a bigger part of her hat. And then this is her shoulders right here. Now I'm going to try to explain to you the older lady. Now the older lady, this is her bangs. That's actually covering like this is also her eyelash, but this right here is her other eye. This, which was a nose on the young lady is actually like a mole. Like the, really the old lady kind of looks like a witch. Okay, so like for instance, this is the nose of the older lady and this is her nostril and this is her mouth and she has like a pointed chin right here and this again is her shoulders. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, so again, I want you to understand that right when this one, two people can see the wrong, the same thing and, and both be right but disagree. 
So again, that talks about, it's not about right or wrong. It's, it's, it, don't be so ran to make judgments about right or wrong. It's going to be right or wrong based upon your perception before, because of your paradigm, but that doesn't make the other person wrong. All right. So that's number two. So number one was we we're understanding the power of paradigms. And then number two, we talked about what and who experiences us. And then the third one, of course, is understanding how to make a paradigm shift. And it all culminates to that, right? Because if you understand but that if you see things from a different point of view, not only will it help you to understand why you are the way you are, but it will also help you to understand why other people are the way that they are. And by knowing about your paradigms and know about paradigms in general, it's going to help you to one, examine them and test them against your reality, and then perhaps decide to make a paradigm shift. And this will give you an objective overall view because we all like to say that we're objective, but just some of the exercises I mentioned today, are you really objective? And keep in mind, all of this determines our behaviors and our attitudes, okay? So remember, you want to make sure you understand the power of paradigms. Those are those mental maps that we see the world. We want to make, understand who and what influence us and then understand that making a paradigm shift is actually going to ultimately help us. All right, with that being said, I hope this was very helpful to you. So now we're going to move our way on to the second segment, which is where we're going to go do a five. All right. Hi, I see Serena. Good morning, Serena. How are you doing? I actually have my glasses on so I can see. As remember, if I'm not calling you out, it's not a lot of times because I can't see you or if you're on, particularly if I don't have my glasses on, then I don't, <laughs> I can see blurry. Like, you know what's so funny? It's not really funny, haha, but like ironic. It's like, as I see clear on some things, my vision is going a little different. I, I see little words, but I can't see what you're saying, but I see you're saying something. And I think I still see Serena. <laughs> Good morning. Good to see you. I actually did a talk with Tina yesterday. We didn't get a chance to do our, our broadcast, but uh, we're going to reschedule it. Mm. So anyway, and another thing is if you do come on, let's say in a different segment, like if I'm doing yoga, obviously I'm not going to see you because the camera or is, is farther away from me. But also if you do come on with the meditation, I don't want to kind of interrupt the meditation to call you out. But I want to know I do see you guys and I want to really thank you for taking the time to watch um, this recording live and also the recording. All right. So we're going to be doing a yoga section, which is uh, the body. And remember, we're doing five minute exercise. Remember, it's about the little things. We tend to take goals in big chunks and then we get upset with ourselves when we don't get a chance to achieve them. But it's just the small things that you can do every single day that's going to make a big difference. So this transferring your life in 15 minutes is based upon that premise where we're actually just doing five minute exercises, one each for the mind, the body and the soul. And by doing this, hopefully, you know, not hopefully, I know that over time, you're going to have a big effort. You're going to have a big change, a big transformation in your life. And if you do have chance, like I'm just giving you like little snippets, right? This time for the, for the mind, we're reading the seven habits of highly effective people. I highly, highly recommend that you go out and get that book. And by the way, if you're kind of wondering, like sometimes I have the hard copy and then sometimes I have the electronic copy. And a lot of books, I have both of them. Now, with the seven habits, I actually had a physical copy, but I gave it away. As a matter of fact, what I usually do um, a lot of times is I give it away for gifts, like particularly students that are graduating from high school. I try to give that as a book. And I probably shouldn't say this because, um, but I will say it anyway. Um, a lot of times what I do is I give, a, I, put, I give the book as a gift and then I put money like in the middle of the book. And so I, to this day... I've yet to have someone tell me that they got the money. So I wonder if they're actually reading the book. Guys, you got to read. Reading is fundamental. All right? Teach your children to read. And, and again, even if you don't have time to read the physical book, there's audio books, there's podcasts, there's all kinds of things that will help you edify your mind. A lot of times when we start to attack our goals, we, we do it by, you know, the outside. And you know I'm a big advocate for working on the inside out. Okay? So all three of these really is working from the inside because... Guess what? We think we tend to think that the mind and the body are separate, but they're really one. They're connected. So when we're working on the mind, we're also working on the body. And then likewise, we're working on the body, particularly with yoga. It's a mind-body connection I want you to get in, into uh, into contact with. Okay. And then of course, for the last five minutes, we're going to do um, the last portion of it. We're going to do a five-minute meditation. All right. So let's go ahead. Well, I'm talking. I'm supposed to be getting my music ready, right? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, this morning, what I feel like, no, let's do child's pose. I really kind of like what I did yesterday and I kind of think I want to use that and kind of move on from there. So go ahead and do a child's pose, get in that position, um, with extended arms and keep in mind guys with this mind body connection, as we're going through these poses, 
I don't want you just to get into the pose because I'm saying get into the pose. I want you to feel your way into the pose and use your breath. So uh, I don't always get to say it, but as you inhale, you're just kind of holding your position. And as you exhale, releasing, that's when you're releasing, relaxing the tension. That's when you're actually getting into the poses. And it's a dual thing. Not only are you getting into the poses on the exhalation, but you're also thinking on the inhale, you're going internal and you're thinking of any tight areas or tensions in your body. And then as you exhale, by the time that you're exhaling, you're into, let's say, a position or a pose, and then you're, you're actually directing your breath towards the tight areas of those bodies, like you're actually releasing the tension that you're feeling in the pose that we're doing, okay? So keep that in mind. And when it comes to the child's pose, like you should be getting into the child's pose now as I'm talking to you, take a couple breaths and then just kind of release and relax and surrender into that position, okay? Don't just get into the position because I say get in the position. And you'll see me do that. Like That's why I kind of pause a lot of times before I do it. I'm getting myself ready. I'm looking, I'm going inside to see what's happening with me as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get ready and get started. All right, so my feet are together. My knees are slightly apart. Take a nice deep breath and then I'm starting to kind of exhale and get into an extended arm child's pose. And hold this position for a couple deep breaths. You're inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. I'm starting to sway my body because in the morning I want it all to be about movement so I just want to kind of do what just feels comfortable what feels natural to you just kind of rocking my hips side to side feeling gentle stretches and pulls on the different parts of my body as I'm going through this pressing my fingertips all into the mat Just releasing that tension that I feel in my shoulders. And again, just using the breath. All right, let's go ahead and bring our body up forward. Tabletop top. Make sure that your palms are directly underneath your shoulders, your knees are directly underneath your hips. Now we're going to curl our toes under and we're going to take it to downward facing dog. And we're going to begin by rocking our feet or pedaling our legs. Again, your fingers and your toes are spread out nice and wide. Your hands are shoulder distance apart and your feet about hip distance apart. Unless you want to modify and take it to a wide leg stance. Your head is in alignment with your bicep and you're pressing your chest toward your thighs and your knees. You're using your breath, inhaling deeply through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Let's go ahead and come up on the top of our toes and roll down through the balls of our feet all the way down to the heels, pressing the chest back towards your thighs and knees. Let's do that again. Come up on the top of your toes and then roll down through the balls of your feet all the way down to your heels. One more time. Come up on the top of your toes. And then press your feet all the way down from the balls of your feet all the way down to the heels. Nice deep ujjayi breath. Just go internal. Do what feels tight and just kind of release the tension, any negativity that you may feel within your body. Let's go ahead and bend our knees almost all the way down toward the mat. And then extend the legs. Tailbone goes all the way back. Do that again. Drop the knees down toward the mat and then extend the legs. One more time. Knees go down toward the mat and then extend the legs. Press the chest toward the thighs and the knees. Go ahead and continue to pedal. All right, let's go ahead and come up on our toes one more time. And this time, I want you to take your hips over to the left and kind of bend that left leg. Oh, that feels so good. And then return back to the center and continue to paddle. 
remember, just kind of take your time. It's early in the morning. You want to do what feels good and what feels natural to you. Now it's going to come, go ahead and come up on the top of your toes and lean over to the right as you bend your right knee. Feel a gentle stretch on that side. The obliques up toward the chest area and then return. All right, let's go ahead and walk our feet in towards our hands and just kind of forward fold here. Go ahead and clasp your elbows. Let the crown of your head bring your body weight naturally forward. So just kind of came down here. Micro knees, soft knees here. Lift the kneecaps to engage those quadriceps and then give a deeper stretch of those hamstrings. Just kind of hold it here for a moment. Remember, just draw your breath. Deep you digress. Draw the exhale toward the tension in those hamstrings to loosen them up. Let's kind of sway our body side to side. Remember, it's about movement. Just do what feels comfortable to you. We'll be here for a couple more breaths just because it feels so good. Try to surrender this into this pose on each exhale. Try to go a little deeper. All right, go ahead and release the fingertips down toward the mat and then let's slowly round it up. Take it one vertebrae at a time. Just kind of take your time here. Make sure that your head is the last to rise and then rotate your shoulders down and back. All right, let's go ahead and do a salutation here. Let's take a nice deep breath. As you inhale, you take the arms overhead. As you exhale, we're gonna dive the body forward. As we inhale, we're gonna look up halfway and flatten out the back. Stick your tailbone out toward the back of the room. As you exhale, you're gonna flatten out the palms. We're gonna step back right, left into the plank. And then we're gonna exhale the downward facing dog. We're gonna to inhale to the plank. And we're going to exhale the down facing dog. Again, as you inhale, take it to the plank. And then as we exhale, we're going to take it to the downward facing dog. Now, this last time, we're going to hold plank and just kind of hold plank just to get some of the strengthening in for a couple deep breaths. Remember, draw your weight down towards your heels. Head is the natural alignment of the spine. And continue to breathe. Press the belly button in towards your spine. All right, from here, we're going to release the knee chest chin or Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale the upward facing dog. And then curl the toes under and exhale the downward facing dog. And let's do that again. Let's walk our feet in. Slowly round it up, one vertebrae at a time. Kind of take your time. And rotate your shoulders down and back. Deep breath, inhale, arms go up overhead. Exhale, dive the body forward. Inhale, look up, halfway, flatten out the back. Tailbone sticks up to the back of the room. Exhale, flatten out the palms, step back, left, right into the plank. Hold the plank. Now, as you exhale, why don't you bring your left foot toward the left uh, pinky toe, or pinky, not toe, but pinky. And then switch. All right, switch again. Now, try to press your hips down toward the mat. We're doing a gentle stretch here, those hip flexors. We spend a lot of time in the seated position. There's not that many times that we take the opportunity to stretch out our hip flexor. And this pose right here does it. It's hard to reach here. Just kind of hold it here and breathe and then switch. All right, return it back to the plank. Release your knee, chest, chin, or chaturanga dandasana. Inhale the upper facing dog and then curl the toes under. Exhale the downward facing dog. Now again, go ahead and walk your feet in toward the palms. And then slowly take it up, one vertebrae at a time. Always making sure that your head is the last to rise. We'll take the shoulders down and back. All right, let's go ahead and face forward. Now 
spread your feet out nice and wide. Your toes are facing to the front. It's about three feet distance in between your feet. And I want you to clasp your hands together. Lift up your chest and draw those knuckles all the way down towards the mat. This is on the inhale. And then as you exhale, just hinge from your hip and dive the body all the way forward. Bringing those arms forward toward the screen if it's right in front of you. My hands are a little slippy here. My interlace fingers are trying to come apart. And as I release, we surrender to the stretch. Lift those kneecaps, engage your quadriceps, and just continue to hold and breathe. So I'm going to bring my palms down towards the small of my back. And then I'm going to release my fingertips all the way down towards the mat. And I'm going to go a little deeper into the stretch. Now let's go ahead and take it over towards the left. This may be your right. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale, surrender. And let's take it over toward the opposite side. Inhale, flatten out the back, exhale, surrender. Now let's take it back to the center. Rotate your palms so that your fingertips are actually facing the back of the room. And as you exhale, just kind of walk your fingertips back. As you let the crown of your head pull your body weight naturally forward. All right, go ahead and release your fingertips. Place your hands on your hips. And then slowly take it all the way up. Relax your shoulders. And let's come back to mountain pose. Your feet are directly underneath your hips, or you can bring your feet together. Your arms are down by your side. Your chest is lifted. Shoulder blades are drawn down and back. Head is natural extension of the spine. And stay a moment here. And just give me a couple deep breaths. Just want to put our hands together at the heart center in mountain pose. We tend to rush to this pose, but this is a grounding pose right here. I want you to pretend like you're strong, your spine is nice and strong, and there's some root that's coming at the bottom of your feet and it's really implanting into the middle earth. Just really get yourself nice and grounded. Nice, deep, rejigh breath. a great pose to begin your day. You know, you get your mind right, set your intentions, give a little gratitude. All right, go ahead and release the arms down by your side. Take a nice deep breath, lay the hands overhead. And as you exhale, dive the body forward. <clears throat> Place your palms flat, walk your feet out to the edges of the mat, lower your tailbone down towards the mat, using the elbows to push out on those inner thighs. Bring the, hearts, the palms together at the heart center and bow your head down. Great time to give some gratitude. Sending love and good wishes to those that are close to you, strangers. And then release the palms down. Go ahead and replace your hands behind you. Start to transition weight to a forward seated comfortable position. Cross your legs. And then make sure that you're on your sit bones and not the fleshy part of your bottom. Take the fingertips down toward the side. Relax your shoulders. Let's take a nice deep breath. Inhaling, arms go overhead. And as you exhale, release the fingertips down toward the mat. Deep breath again, inhaling. And as you exhale, release the fingertips down toward the mat. One more time, nice, deep, huge eye breath. Inhaling. This time we're going to greet the palms together at the very top. Draw your shoulders down and behind. And exhale, down through the center. Palms come to heart center. And namaste. All right, so this brings us to our meditation. So go ahead and get yourself comfortable in your seated position. Kind of get a feel of 
where you are, particularly now after doing yoga, your body should be nice and loose. Now it's time to clear that mind. So I invite you to draw your breath in. And then as you exhale, go ahead and close your eyes and drop your chin down toward your chest. Now on your next breath, as you inhale, lift your head and chest all the way up toward the sky. And as you exhale, release your chin down toward your chest. Again, as you inhale, take your head and chest up toward the sky. And as you exhale, release your chin down toward your chest. Let's do that one more time. As you inhale, forehead goes up to the sky, your chest rise as your lungs fill up with the oxygen from your breath. And then this time as you exhale, just release your chin forward so that your, <clears throat> your head is a natural extension of your spine and your eyes are still closed. Just give me a couple deep breaths. Inhaling deeply to your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Now if you need to reground yourself, I want you to imagine that there is a root coming from the bottom of your feet. It's going down through the floor, all the way down to Middle Earth, securing itself nice and strong. Just kind of sit with that for a moment, that nice grounding, using your nice deep Ujjayi breath, diaphragmatic breathing. As the diaphragm comes up through the chest cavity, as your belly expands out, your chest rises as you inhale. And as you exhale, your chest collapse, your abs go in when the, as the diaphragm returns back to its original position. Now I want you to focus on your feet and I want you to squint your toes that really, really tight as you inhale. And as you exhale, release them. Now your calves. Now your thigh muscles. Now is there any thoughts that come into your mind? Just kind of gently push them away. Don't pay any attention to them. You just kind of let them come. Just continue to focus on your breath. Inhaling deeply through your nose. And exhaling through your mouth. I want you to squeeze your buttocks nice and tight. And then release. Now your pelvic area. Now I want you to know any type of tension that you may feel in your lower back. So as you inhale, just kind of re relax or just kind of look at the tension internal. And then as you exhale, just kind of release. Release all the tension that you may feel in your lower back. Let's do the same thing with the mid and upper back. And remember, if any thoughts that come into your mind, just gently push them aside and just really focus on your breath. You're doing a good job. Now go ahead and squeeze up your shoulders. Go ahead and hunch them up real tight toward your ears. And then release them. Now focus on your neck and your jaw. Now direct your attention to the top of your head, your forehead. It's releasing all the tension and stress. Now I invite you again to hunch those shoulders just one last time. And as you exhale, just release all any remaining tension that may, you may, may have held in your body.
And just kind of sit with this relaxation feeling for a moment, just getting a few deep breaths here. Go ahead and take a nice deep breath for me, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Again, take a nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. One more time, nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose. and exhaling through your mouth. Okay, go ahead and open up your eyes as you release, relax, return, refreshed, and calm. You've done something good for yourself today. I right, thank you take, for taking the time for Meditate With Me, and thank you again for taking the time to watch um, this live broadcast of Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. My name is Pia, and it's been my pleasure your word for today is zest. I want you to have a day that is full of great energy. All right, so have a zestful day. See you again tomorrow. Bye.